Last week, rumours started to appear about a major investment bank that was on the brink of collapse. Now, at first, it was unusual sources like you see from this tweet behind me here. Random Twitter accounts and things like that. People who had insights from friends who worked in the industry. Nothing too concrete and nothing really to act upon. Those rumours kept on coming through though and they ended up centering on two different banks. Credit Suisse and Deutsche Bank, though the former took the brunt of the attention here. Now this continued to escalate until we got some concrete stuff coming out, but this is where it seriously starts to get scary. There are big massive fears of a 2008-esque collapse of financial institutions with Credit Suisse maybe being the first to go. It's being called a potential Lehman moment all across the board because the stock market is already halfway through a crash and a recession is already kicking in as well. The markets are just now waiting for that trigger, that instantaneous moment like we saw in 2008 with Lehman Brothers collapse. And some people are saying that this instance here with Credit Suisse might be this time round's Lehman moment. Now, what exactly has happened though? Well, first we had those rumors, which really weren't too serious according to most people. Their content though was starting to get just a little bit worrying. One of the rumors was that reportedly Credit Suisse's senior staff had spent the entirety of last weekend calling up all of their big clients and telling them firstly how everything is okay and nothing's wrong at all. Oh, and also, please can we have lots and lots of money to make sure that everything stays fine. So they did the exact type of thing that you do when everything is not okay and something is very much wrong. Then Credit Suisse's CEO picked up on all these rumors and he went one further. He said the exact same kind of thing in a massive memo sent out to their 25,000 members of staff. He said, and I quote, I know it's not easy to remain focused amid the many stories you read in the media, in particular, given the many factually inaccurate statements being made. That said, I trust you are not confusing our day-to-day -day stock price performance with the strong capital base and liquidity position of our bank. He also reminded everyone that Credit Suisse have a big fancy plan coming out soon and it's sure to save the company from the danger that it of course isn't actually facing. Unfortunately though, it doesn't quite stop there because now Credit Suisse is in the firing line. People are starting to take a closer look at the company and they're seriously starting to worry. This tweet behind me here from Graham Stephen shows just how big a collapse would be with it far outweighing a collapse of Lehman Brothers of 2008. We've also seen the share price of Credit Suisse absolutely tank over recent years, along with many other companies, yes, but even by the standard of 2022, this has been a very poor year for Credit Suisse. From their 2018 high, their share price is down by 77%, and it's now fallen by about 55% during 2022 alone. Now, yes, of course, a low share price doesn't instantly mean a company is going to die, but it can present a bunch of different problems. Should Credit Suisse need some cash? Well, they're not going to be raising capital under ideal conditions with share prices at rock bottom levels. And those rock bottom levels probably indicate that investors aren't that confident in the future of the company either. So raising cash using other methods like bond sales won't be too easy either. It's a good thing that they aren't calling up all their biggest clients over the weekend and asking for money then, right? Oh, wait. The other thing that's been getting an awful lot of attention is Credit Suisse's CDSs or credit default swaps, which basically just show how likely the market think it is that Credit Suisse is going to default over a certain time frame. And after all of this drama, obviously that level rose. On the extreme end, Credit Suisse's one year CDS rose by over 5% of the course of one day. Still though, it did actually remain pretty low with the market on average pricing in the likelihood of a default in the next year's time to something like 3%. This to some people then means that all is well because the risk of default is only 3%, right? Well, sadly, that's not actually the case. This is merely a consensus of what investors or the market think is likely. And much like every other financial instrument out there, the market is very often wrong. Let's not forget back in 2021, when the market was pricing in zero rate hikes for 2022 at all, we've already seen how inaccurate the market was then, or in 2020, when the market was pricing in inflation of 2% and no higher for years to come. Again, it was wildly off base there. The market is not an all-seeing, all-knowing entity. It's just the aggregate of its participants, and those participants are not omniscient either.
Now, from a purely anecdotal point of view, things just don't look great for Credit Suisse. They now have announced that they might be selling their Mandarin Oriental Savoy, a very famous hotel that they own in Switzerland. It's quite a big deal. It could also raise them quite a bit of cash though. Now, this just doesn't scream that everything's okay, especially when taken in conjecture with everything else that's going on. This does just seem a little bit like they're liquidating their assets to try and get enough cash to keep the company afloat. Now, those people who've seen the film Margin Call might have a decent idea of what the offices of Credit Suisse look like right about now. Is Credit Suisse actually going to collapse then? Well, who knows? No, honestly, who knows? Because frankly, I don't. The only people who do know are those in a position of authority at Credit Suisse itself, and they're obviously not going to tell everyone else what they actually think. For us outsiders, it's not clear who to trust. Some tell us that it's all over. Some are telling us that everything is fine. We do know that the company has been getting hammered. We know that they are restructuring in an attempt to save the company. And we know that they're struggling to find the money to put this savior plan into action. None of that there is good news at all. Right now though, the market's belief that they will collapse over the next month or so is actually extremely low, and some of those market participants will have an insight into the business that we, the lame people, just don't have. Now the real reason this is so important, the reason I'm talking about it and everyone else is talking about it too, is because it isn't really about Credit Suisse. It's about a potential Lehman moment, the collapse of a major financial institution that then ripples across the entirety of the financial markets, causing everything to tank and hitting every single country in the world. People are obviously right now worried about the state of the economy and with good reason. Debt levels are extremely high and interest rates keep rising every month, making that debt more and more costly. The Fed has also made it clear that that process isn't going to change either. They are going to keep hiking interest rates because they want to destroy inflation and they're willing to destroy the economy in the process. Consumer confidence levels are at all-time lows, with normal people frankly terrified of what's to come. This will impact real people and their spending habits. They will save more money, they will spend less, they will take fewer risks, and this will ripple all across the economy once more, and it will result in lower growth and a stronger recession. More often than not, actually, a recession is caused by scared people doing what scared people do. Something like a major worldwide bank going bankrupt would without a doubt have that effect on people, just as it did in 2008 with Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns. That being said though, it is frankly impossible to know whether or not this is that Lehman moment for this market crash. We've already seen two massive scandals and failures actually significantly related to Credit Suisse over the last couple of years with Greensill and Archegos, with calls that they were Lehman moments at the time as well. We also saw a bunch of calls that the Ukraine war was this sort of trigger which would cause an instant collapse and that didn't come. And of course, who could forget the two month long period back in late 2021 where everyone in the world suddenly cared about Evergrande and thought that would be a Lehman moment too. Now my point here isn't that the collapses and defaults and scandals aren't important or that they don't matter at all. Evergrande, for example, is still collapsing. It's just falling very slowly because it's falling with the property market in China and the Communist Party is doing everything it can to prop that entire industry up. Evergrande will though have monumental impacts on the world economy and will contribute to this recession in a serious way. But what isn't certain is what that event will be, which will be the trigger where everything suddenly changes the bulls run away and the bears truly come out to play. Obviously, when Lehman Brothers fell in 2008, it wasn't the only bank to go. And if we see something similar happen this time around, Credit Suisse won't be the only one to fall in 2022. Deutsche Bank is also being tipped as an awfully run bank just waiting to fall apart and I wouldn't be surprised to see that at all. It's in a similar position to Credit Suisse and has also been covered in scandals that are bringing it to its knees. The same is of course to be said for a number of other financial institutions too, it's just pretty hard to actually know which ones at this point. Now many will be asking if their capital is safe, if their retirement funds or their investment portfolios are going to get plundered if these banks fall. Unfortunately here, I just don't have an answer for you all. The question isn't just whether or not your bank will fall, it's also whether or not your government will come to your aid. In the past, we have seen too big to fail on a massive scale and it may sound pessimistic of me, but I seriously think we're on our way to another situation just like that. Some banks though will be allowed to die, some will be rescued at great cost to the taxpayer, some of us will lose our life savings and some of us won't. It's a somber thought, but it is, in my opinion, what's actually likely to happen over the next couple of years. 